Hi, everybody. All right. So that was a, a big uh, time lapse for me. Um, sorry about that. But, but apparently there was lots of drama going on. I'm going to move my computer off a little bit for a minute. Oops. So, um, okay. So here we go to continue Rooster Cogburn. And we're going to home you in to the real final area uh, based on the riddles that we've solved so far. And then we're, we're going to take a look at Rooster Cogburn today. And Rooster Cogburn is basically, I'm already at the final area. And um, Forrest is teasing me. And um, I'm missing it. This is a uh, scrapbook 193. And so I'm there in Carson. Uh, this is October 2018. I've been there since March, and I keep missing it. And so Forrest is teasing me in this scrapbook by creating a fictional character called Rooster Cogburn, which we'll talk about in a minute, and um, and giving a map, which uh, is very helpful in terms of finding the final area once you figure out where to apply the map. Just like you have to apply the poem a second time around, literally versus through the mines, this map is also very helpful, as well as the, the map on page 99, if you understand that this is pranks for forest. So nothing, you do not take it the overt, you take, you take the opposite game, and then you um, basically apply it. So once you figure out the real area, you just kind of generally apply the subtle hints in the map, as opposed to using the map itself. And we'll get into that in just a second. So behind me, I'm in the library uh, again. And uh, it, I was fortunate. Hi, Bobby. We're going to do a, a fun exercise today. I have to get my chapstick, though. Um, so I was fortunate enough to get this, this conference room today to do this presentation. And um, it had this little board behind me. So I thought, well, that was very helpful because I could really use a map to show you because there's a map in the scrapbook. So that turned out um, pretty pretty well. OK. so. I told you about some of the other riddles. I told you we were in Carson, and I told you that you're looking for mistakes. And again, remember, Forrest teases you. First of all, he wears funny hats. He's telling you he's a prankster. You've got the 15% rule. You, you know it's kind of a slapstick, funny area. And you know you're looking for his funny heaven on earth, uh, and um, which is consistent with, with Jack. It's consistent with the fact that we have a Dahori chest and we're gonna get the real chest. And so once you pierce through, as I told you, once you pierce through the lies and the jokes, you'll get to the various mines. You'll get to the various other hints like roads. And then for this one, you're gonna to get to the final area. So um, one of the things that he was joking, and you, re and you know, remember the chest, which you all forgot about while everybody was searching, following a spoof writer, is that, um, <laughs> we could have Red Rooster in. That's a good nickname, huh? Um, well, uh, remember, you have the names of the chest are helpful, too. And you, that has no application, of course, to Jack and to the Sullivan, Wyoming. And uh, specifically, you had him say that you had two names for the chest. And we'll come to the final area uh, briefly today. But... Um, which is when you're going to do the poem literally, okay? This is when you actually apply the poem literally, you know, um, and, and you're going to go nigh and you're going to do all that kind of stuff, okay? So this is literal. But remember, in the final area, it's going to be indulgence. The chest was called indulgence. Well, what does indulgence mean? Indulgence is, is like a Catholic church basically saying forgiveness. So the prankster is going to, after you have to follow the silly, chase the silly prankster around, uh, the, the, the award is indulgence like you know this is sorry sorry i i played around with you and clowned around with you so that is yet to come and the other thing for the chest was it was called tarzan and that's consistent with the crocodile joke that i've been telling you um that you're chasing the the, the crocodile who wants to eat all the all of us fishy searchers so okay so okay if that's my nickname that's my nickname okay so okay so back to okay so we'll, so we'll come back to this okay this is the final area and we'll come back to this in another book discussion uh i've got two more that i can think of to do this and then also um is, at the end of this discussion i'll tell you from the remembrance article that i can clearly see that two that i'm missing two people in the poem that have minds 
and they'll also have some kind of section here in the final area. So we'll come back to the remem Remembrance article next. All right, so now we get to the map and to the Rooster Cogburn scrapbook. Okay, so I'm going to put my screen up a little bit. Hopefully I don't lose connection. Okay, so what did I tell you so far? Okay, push this aside. Push this aside. Okay, so up to my map. Okay, well, I told you in terms of some of our mistakes, I told you that 519 is a mistake in one of the scrapbooks. So let's look that up for you and I'll tell you which one it is. 519. Maybe he says 515, hold on. It's the word count. Yeah, I've jammed, which is, he says, I've jammed a lot of oral history into these in these 515 words. It's actually 519 words. And jam is, again, the, the mine for Lily. So that's page 418 of the PDF file. Okay, and this is the song, this is the one I call Ripple, for there is a road no simple highway, and, and that's my Ripple song, consistent with Ojo Caliente at the, at the base. Okay, this when you when you when I how I know there's a movie coming up is there's song lyrics and everybody calls me delusional but I'm not delusional because they're based on real life events. So there's all kinds of cow songs here and moves like Jagger uh, was one of the goofy things I did relative to the cow song along with cowbell joke from uh, Saturday Night Live. Okay, so we're, we're the move we're moves like Jagger for the movie and um, he makes the move the cow joke in the. Um, Lake's song, which we'll get to when we come back to the final area. Okay. Uh, all right. When he talks about one of the songs, I think it's seven, uh, I think is applicable. I think that's a forest song, too, because of the um, dowels, which is the stuffed animal thing that I did while I was there making the kids' book. And then also the, uh, down here on 519, on your way to Servietta, uh, there's, a, there's a road divider, and this is where you'll find the Salt Lake Mine, which he talks about here. I think he, I think there's like a scrapbook. He's like going to the refrigerator and he's getting bologna, which he's full of bologna. Salt Lick. Uh, remember he talked about how he looks like the salt off his arm at some point. Click. I, I can't remember where, maybe he did it in a Jenny Kyle thing. And then the buttermilk I told you, drinking buttermilk is for Jerry House. At, at, and that's up, that's up towards um, Jersey Cream is, is is further away. That's up at Hopewell. All right, so we're back to here. So this is where you're gonna get the India joke because I played the song Condimente um, and I also took a picture, I think I could find it for you, um, with the, uh, the Spice scrapbook. I took a picture, I was making like a spaghetti squash or something and I, I had the, uh, oh, one of the spices he, he referred to, lemon pepper, I think it was. Okay, so anyway. That's real. This is why you get the whole relish in the remembrance article, and the the relish was in Jenny Kyle. So that's where this is. I believe is going to lead you to, which is like the Salt Lake mine down here. I don't know if anybody has this mine. Um, it may be somebody I'm missing. So we'll come back to that. Um, I have to go back and reread the scrapbooks again. But I, I that was like one of the first mines that I came and took pictures from. Um, when I came in from Chicago. So I came in via train, I don't know, one or two times, and then I started to drive because I didn't want to leave Cupcake behind. And so she became my search partner. Okay, so then here's 519. Okay, and so then I told you, and remember the circle, remember I told you that you can go straight to it. So down here, pretty much straight 90 degrees, uh, no, 180 degrees, sorry. What is that, 90, 180 degrees, straight, a straight line. Ironically, it's his house down in Santa Fe. So when he, you really could go literally straight to it, and he tells you that it's diabolically connected, and that's the wrong choice of words. It's actually diametrically was the choice of words he should have used. So again, that's consistent with the straight line from his house. All right, so the straight line from his house takes you all the way up, right? So now, we're, and we know, as we've discussed a time or two ago, if you're going to go over the rainbow, rainbow mine is at Forest Road 222. Okay, so you've cut off all of everything south of 222. Okay, you've got La Madura down there. That's sort of referred to in the wood. 
So now you're basically dealing with 519, starting with Forest Road 222, and up, okay? And uh, 519 then dies out at, at the road um, that takes, the, the Forest Road that takes you out from Las Tablas up to Trace um, Piedras. Okay, so it's a limited area. All right, then you know from our discussion already that in Pataka, that means the cigars. Okay, and I have a picture I saw the other day of my cigar box. Okay, and there's scrapbooks about cigars, and, law, and that goes, and that's appropriate for the lost child. So here, over here on this side of the road, you're going to find Francis mine, and I've, somewhere is my picture with me wearing the scarf. I'll go look for it. Uh, my Kate, uh, Grace Kelly. So the hints about Francis mine again were Poe. Okay, that's the love, the Valentine poem in Poe. Okay, he alludes to Poe in the books. So if you look up his Valentine. That's a coded poem, just like this is, for his love. And the way you do that one is you like go down letter by letter, like one over each time. So it's a hint that this is a love poem as well. All right, so Francis Minus is, is the, and that's about Francis, is, is the lady in the poem, in the Poe poem. And then you've also got the Grace Kelly, okay? And that's the, To Catch a Thief, so you're catching the thief forest. And her name in To Catch a Thief, Grace Kelly was Francis, and that's why the character in my book for Kelly is Roby. And I think I said it because of her. It's actually John Roby is, is Cary Grant's character in To Catch a Thief, okay? And then you've got Queen Mine. We talked about being for Zoe, I believe. And um, and that was the Ormay Washington, and I think it's Amelia Earhart were the hints for that. And so you think about it, you've got now, if you're going to go find his kingdom, You've got Grace Kelly, Princess. You've got Queen. Okay. And so in the book, you're going to see for Cody, his lost son, which is Teddy Bear Mine, um, you're going to see me put him in a, in a king scene in, in my book. Okay. So he is, so Forrest is the king prankster. And one of the skits I sent him was the, the King Bugs Bunny joke. It was called uh, A Rise to a Loin of Beef. Which I kind of thought was kind of funny because of you know the cow reference. There's cows all over the place, um, and and it's just funny because in that skit he basically hits the guy over the head repeatedly as Bugs Bunny, and I was making the joke that like basically I was like you know I was like the, the, that guy getting beat over the head all the time by Boris looking for this thing. Okay, so anyway, that's Pataka. Here's the church. There's a scrapbook about a church. So that's, that's what I believe is alluded to right here. You see photographs on my community page and on my Zazzle page. It's right here. There's another church across the road, like kind of here. Okay, this is the saloon. Okay, just so you know. So the saloon is really just a guy's trailer. So somebody knew this area very well to know that the saloon in town was this guy who basically served alcohol for everybody in the neighborhood. Okay, so it's not really a saloon you're looking for in the saloon scrapbooks. And then up here, I told you again, was the cave, okay? As you curve up to up to Las Tablas, here's Pataka Peak, which I told you was the hint about the air in the plains, um, meaning breast, and the word was, I remember it the other day. Oh, I, f I forgot it, but it's the name of the plane that has the wrong plane count. Okay, so this, again, so that's Pataka Peak over there. Two cents is why you get the corn. That means corn, okay? Here you've got 276. That's right there. That's um, the road that, um, that's the Monday puzzle, okay? I think, I think the answer was 2.76, okay? Then uh, you've got 274. <clears throat> that's the error that we talked about in how many, how many missions if you look on one page, he tells you it's like 300 and something, 320 something. And the other page, he tells you it's 274. So again, the error is 274 for, because he's a prankster. And so that's going to be right here. And I heard recently, and I, because I didn't pay too much attention to the Jack stuff because he's a spoof writer, but he is also a proxy. So um, I did, you know, and so we'll talk about that in the Remembrance article and how my jokes are in the Remembrance article. Um, but I did hear somebody mention the other day that he said the place was dangerous. This is this is a rough town. 
Um, and the word I came that I couldn't remember the other day was I talked about um, what did I talk about? I talked about trash. There's a lot of trash. Okay, throw it in the trash. Um, I was constantly picking up trash it's all over the place. It's like it's like over here. They just dumped. They come and it's like over here. So um, just basically they take anywhere they can take the trash because they don't want to give trash service. And then it's also down in Oh, They basically find a forest road and they dump. Okay. Um, oh, and the other word I couldn't remember the other day that we talked about in my book discussion was the word heroin. And that was this misspelling of Skaggs uh, Grocery Store, purposefully misspelled. And the etymology of the other word is heroin, which again, there's a drug issue uh, generally in rural New Mexico as well as here. And I had a run in, um, there was a guy there at the time, turns out he was in fact very dangerous. Um, and now he's in jail. And uh, I had a run in and I called him and his girlfriend, Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, they were just wackadoos. So anyway, uh, fortunately when we go there, he should not be around and we shouldn't have an issue. All right, so um, then we go over here, and I told you. Okay, so we, so he's really honing in, homing in on Pataka, right? Okay, we got roads, we got 519, we got all these things, and then we've got up here, we've got King Mine. Okay, this is the road I call Stairway to Heaven. So you can see Stairway to Heaven. You've got over here. I showed you on my short reels. So, so of me driving with um, Cupcake and Frosting to Sandoval kind of comes down here. Okay, so there's, I never, I, I went there like once or twice to, to get like a piece of the mine. And then, um, but mostly my pictures I told you on my short video were taken up at Sandoval Tank. Up here then I took some photographs At Alma Mine, which I talked to, uh, to you about on a short. So that's up there. Woohoo! And that's the Wish Me a Rainbow song that I played for Forrest. I also played him a song by the artist Alma, which is um, Life is a. What is it? Life is a. What, life is a fantasy? Life is. The, the song from uh, that Moo Valley song, in, in honor of the cops. Okay. All right, so now. Oh, and here's my bluebird mine. This is the mine I picked for me and my grandmother. The check, I'm wearing the check sweatshirt. Okay, so that was my mine. So we got king. Uh, okay, so I think I've covered everything except for this final area. Okay, so now rooster cover. Okay, so again, the errors. You're looking, you're not, you're not going to treat this overtly. You're going to treat this as a general map, like you treat map 99. And I told you on map 99, he purposely drew, drew the arrow the wrong way. But fortunately, by that point in time, which was the February 2019, I had already seen that he was the prankster vis-a-vis -vis the fake blaze. And um, I knew basically like, oh, I kind of, I, I knew he was the junk uh, the mine, the mining's page was was the fake blaze, but I knew not to fall necessarily for his arrow and go the direction. So I did a whole circle of the fake blaze when I and then I finally found it with the um, driveway scrapbook. And you'll note in one of my videos that my car is white. I just did it. I showed you my car, and that's because um, he he teases me about. I told him that I busted my um, mirror. In Chicago, I was merging uh, up on the uh, like where the Kennedy merges with the Dan Ryan, and I and this truck hit hit me, and I didn't think I was going to be able to return. Uh, but fortunately, it was covered by insurance and it got fixed. But the guy totally knocked off my um, mirror, and so that's why you get the driveway scrapbook. So that he was teasing me about that when he talks about backing down the driveway. So when you back down the driveway at the last mine. You do the poem literally, you're going to back down to find, I think it was the bunkhouse or something, he called it, right? At home, he was, he was using by metaphor his home in Santa Fe to give you direction in the final area, how you come down the quote-unquote road, and you're going to go that way. 
which is hard to see because this is all like uh, brush, underbrush, and I had to plow through it, which is the fence. The fence is in the scrapbook about the um, taking away the fence in the scrapbook about the Chicago, um, there was a Chicago scrapbook with the mall. And he talks about getting to the bear, but you had to go through the fence. That's what that is about. So I had to get through the underbrush. Okay, so let's go to Rooster Cogburn. Uh-oh, I lost my... Uh, Something, I think my keyboard is dying because like sometimes I have to like plug it in and unplug it, but I'll just go back, I'll just scroll down and find it. Uh, what's, what is this one? Of course it always, I was, it was just working. Oh, here we go, what's this? Oh, I forgot to go in backwards order. So it's up higher. Scrapper 211. Oh, here, 211 is the one where he teases about the car. That's the one, that's when I finally found it. Requ Requiem for a wreck. <laughs> okay. So then we go down to 190. Here we go. Okay, I'll read this one to you. He's teasing me for being a dumbass. 196. Oh, here's the one with the arrest joke. So this is a continuation of the arrest joke, which you get in the Remembrance article too, Beyond a Reasonable Doubt. He had been teasing me, starting with this one, about the arrest, my, arrest, my false arrest. I forget how he knew it, if I told him or if he figured it out through figure it, researching me. But you get the first one where I was cracking up on Dale's site about it under Willow Tree. And that was um, that was a Suzanne Summers Baby It's Cold Outside scrapbook. So that's how you knew it was a woman who was, who was close. Okay, here we go. Let me let me unplug. Let me plug in and unplug my my um left my keyboard here to see if I can get it to work because it's kind of annoying that I can't do a search command. I don't know what I did to the damn thing. All of a sudden, just the other day, it started like sporadically not working. I don't know if I left it in the car and froze it. No. Hold on. Maybe my computer's dying. Could be that. This computer's really old. Time to get a new computer. I had a laptop and it broke. I busted it the other day. Okay, hold on. Let's see if I can get it going. If not, it's a scrap of 193. Nope. Okay. Today I received, let me maximize the screen. Oh, I see it, okay. So on page 171 is the map you're gonna to wanna to look at. And on that map, you're not gonna use it literally. You're gonna use it, um, so again, the overt is wrong and subtle is correct. So you're not gonna actually use it to what is discussed in this scrapbook. You're just using it generally relative to this area, okay? Then go, so he's basically trying to say that I'm missing it and he's teasing me by saying that I'm chicken to go in the area, uh, which is kind of funny because he's like, you know, a rooster. So what does the rooster cogram mean? He's repeated that like three times, okay? So that's that's a riddle. And so you've got a couple different riddles. He's purposely calling me Rooster Cogburn, which is a John Wayne movie. So he's, that relates to down here, okay? So you've got indulgence, okay? The prankster element for the final area. 
You got you're looking for the elusive fish. Gives you that twice. Gives you that in um, the Joe Billy Bob scrapbook, and he gives it to you in the pond. That he's got this a couple times actually, two or two or three. Maybe the Montana story might be that. So you've got a couple times that you're looking for a fish, but your your problem with that riddle is it's a dry. Uh, you need today's water supply, so it's dry river. Okay. And your other problem is, uh, so you need a day's water supply, so it's a riddle. Day's water. Okay. Then we've got the Joe Billy Bob reference, which is a hint. He's, it's kind of a, a funny hint. He's trying to hint to Texas. So your, your river, you're not looking for nine mile hole, you're looking for 10.5 mile hole or whatever I told you the other day. You're looking for something near Pataka. Okay, you're looking under the 15% rule, and your Joe Billy Bob is a Texas hint. It's not a Yellowstone hint. He's making a Texas joke, you know, with the three names to it. You know, everybody in Texas stereotypically has three names. He's making a stereotypical Texas joke. So if you're going to find the final area, you've got to solve this riddle. It's very helpful. Then you've got Tarzan. Okay, we talked about that. The crocodile wants to eat you up. The prankster. In that final area, you're going to see the grapevine, right? You know that I figured out there was a connection to Doug. And then you've got, uh, and, uh, uh, we'll come back to the English major in a second. And then you've also got the Easter theme. And you all mocked me, but it's true. The peeps. So there's the Easter theme is going to be there. Okay, now what? I told you I was an English major. Jack is not an English major. Jack is, a, I think, a finance major. Okay, so hi, Azure. So, so you knew that they were te telling you, huh? If you figured out that Jack was a finance major, why does they say it's meant for an English major? That's because the overt is wrong and subtle is correct, <laughs> including their, that Jack is a proxy for the solver who's, who was an English major. Okay, so there. And I told you in this final area that I talked about uh, when I was taking pictures, I talked about the Rose Tattoo by Tennessee Williams. Okay? We talked about Rooster Cogburn, which is John Wayne movie. We've got Salinger. Okay? We've got Hemingway. Okay? So if you're an English major, you're thinking about that. And I didn't know at the beginning that it was Doug, who of course is familiar with all of these, you know. Um, and then he knew, for example, when I was making Latin jokes, he was talking about, I was making fun of the last line with Braven in the wood. I was making jokes by substituting in the underpants, the underwear from, you know, if he's brave, force is brave, I was substituting in uh, making jokes and, and I was being teased back in the scrapbook by the words vulgar, which is a vulgar, a vulgar Latin. I was making the joke semper ubi sub ubi to tease about that they were making underwear jokes in the poem, like silly jokes. Okay, anyway, you have to understand like where that is. But basically, it's if you were brave and in the wood, and it was really, uh, you if you if you played with it and like you should do in round one. Uh, you and you substitute it in. It was it's kind of, kind of it's kind of faded, but basically it was like underwear, semper ubi, under the wear, as opposed to under the tree. In other words, under that log. <laughs> and I was looking, you know, first I was in the wrong area. I was looking under one log, and I don't remember why. I, I don't know my metal detector didn't pick it up or what. But that log you see is apparently where it was under, so we'll have to wait. And that was obviously retrieved. So, you've, and then you've got two chests, right? You've got the dahori. So everybody's like, "Oh, that's it." No, that's his dahori. Um, and we'll come back to the remembrance article and some things that are on my community page. That's that's a good chest. The, the contents are good. That's forest chest. But you haven't gotten yet to Doug's chest, the solve chest, the real author. He hasn't. He's taking credit for things that he. Um, that he 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 shouldn't be credited for, and so the, the end game is going to be that that this is a gift to Doug and to the solver, uh, which is the Hollywood end yet to come. Okay, so we wait for that. 
So, okay, so I think that's really it. Um, so think about these, you know, these are riddles. Why was I taking pictures? Why do you, and then you can, the songs could, that I can hear, you have the, uh, I think it's in the lakes. You have a rose grew out of ice frozen ground with nobody to tweet it, okay? That's because I was making these rose tattoo by Tennessee William comments about a feature in the final area. If you buy the book, or Azure has the book, um, for his own, don't share the book. Uh, you know, it's in the book, uh, that, that feature, where I was making the rose tattoo comment, which I believe is the reference to the tattoo. I think it actually was a Tennessee, Tennessee Williams reference in that scrapbook about the lady with the tattoo in the grocery store. Okay. Um, okay, so these are riddles. Okay, so think about this. And remember what we talked about under the 15% rule, and um, maybe you'll figure it out. Okay, so back to Rooster. Okay, he teases me a couple ways in the scrapbook. He, he does the orange jumpsuit, which is the false arrest joke that, he teased, that I just got done talking about. He's calling me a, a doofass or something. I think he's supposed to like doofus, like not do, like doofass. I think he says, I don't know what he says. Well, then we'll get to it. It was kind of, it was kind of silly. And it talks about I-80, which is the way I would come. Uh, boy, I wish my search command worked. Let me try one more time. Okay. Let's see. If not, I have to give up. But he gives you the hint about Eastern views. No, it's still not working. Okay, so he gives you the hint about um, I-80. He's telling me that I'm a dumbass, basically. Um, and he makes the false arrest joke. He gives you a map, so apply the map to this area. You know you have a limited amount of space where it can be uh, between 222 and up. I've already told you that the riddle for what I believe the Reagan riddle is is a reference to um, the sunset of my life quote and uh, the concept of rebirth. So the, the, the solver will receive the, the real chest as a paying it forward type. And so when I was debating in terms of metaphorically, whether I was looking for a Western sunset view or a, sun, or a sunrise view, um, I told you that it's East view. And so uh, this way, you're looking this way, okay? And um, then the other thing that you hear that, which is where I could hear the lyrics and, and um, are consistent with my searching, is um, in the lakes, he says, I want auroras and sad prose. So uh, that, I believe, is going to be tied to a movie, too. So, uh, and again, of course, if you get an Eastern view, it's a, a sunrise view. And in the book, you'll see uh, one of the pages, not in this area of the, uh, I basically say that uh, Forrest is the anchorman in a page where it's, there's the uh, rock. It's over at... Uh, White, white, uh, white something overlook, uh, white rock overlook. I think it is. It's over by uh, Los Alamos. This crocodile rock that, that's in the book. <laughs> and I was doing like you know, crocodile rooster jokes. I think in the book it says crocodile do or something. Okay, so anyway, you've got a so you've got a crocodile do sunrise view for your prankster buddy, Horace, okay? So think about these end riddles and then um, apply it and start to try to figure out on a map if you can figure out where it is. And then next time, um, two times after today, we'll come back to applying it literally where you'll see these various things literally as you back down the quote unquote driveway, go down the yellow brick road, go, um, what did I call it, the Milky Way, that's all those things will apply then. And you notice, I put this word here for when we come forward, they use different variations. You mess with the poem 
as the prankster in round one, okay, you, ha you have to mess with it. House of Brown, Brown, Brown is at home of Brown, uh, and you do that under the 15% rule to get the various mines. But round two, you're going to do it literally. So then, I mean, it's really brilliant when you think about it that he, that you know, you, that the words were chosen so carefully that round one you messed with it and you found the minds for his friend's family, and round two you did it literally, and they had a different meaning. So nigh in the, nigh in the, um, nigh in the poem, round one for the minds, I believe, was the reference to the, um, I think it was Fetchin, the one who was drinking. Um, and it, it was, and he, they had some, the, the tipsy, the, the flask story, the golfer with the flask. Um, it was either Fetchin or um, Gaspard. I'd have to go back and remember which one it was. Uh, Putin, put, put, put in was a swear joke for, and that Putin means F U uh, or, or F. Um, and I forget, I get, I'm getting the two mixed up now since it's been a while since I did that. But that's the one artist and the other one, and that was tied with a friend of his who did the book. And then Fetchin, I have to go back again and look, it's been a while. One was Galena Mine, which was a friend of his. Anyway, I'll go back and look for next time since we're gonna come back to a couple I missed. But anyway, when you do round two, the point being is in round one, it's going to have a tie to a mine, just like rocking, uh, what do we come up with um, for Pony Alt? It's Halt. Uh, it's actually Alt in the poem. Pony Alt's mine, we said, was like rocking chair. Okay, so, um, and that is in, you can, if you read the scrapbook again, you'll see rocking chair. Uh, so that was purposely planted in there for her to tie that mine to her. Okay, so anyway, you see that they're going to have significance round two. So, for example, for, so when you turn left, now I literally, it's going to be sort of to remind you of that uh, that story with the with the the uh, the it, like a symbol in the final area for these people. So that's why I was looking for symbols. Not all of them are there, of course. I think, but um, I was certainly looking for symbols. In the final area as well, and so June's mine is different in the final area, as because her vine I think is going to be big bug, but in the final area it's going to be the quote unquote grapevine, which you see in the end scrapbooks, and you see how he talks about the grapevine uh, in in the um, end scrapbooks, and one of the things that he was doing too was. Um, he would never say, hey, Barb, you know, you're missing something, but he would repeat stories because he could figure out through my experience that some of the puzzles, some of his coded minds and people were harder to find. And like I told you, I found some posts, you know, in this post stage, um, like Pony Alt and the the, uh, the Fetchin reference, the Gaspard reference. Um, but he would repeat stories to basically say, uh, and you see this in the Remembrance article, he, he makes three references to a couple different people. He, he makes another reference to Eric Sloan. He teases, quote unquote, Jack, that it looks like, you know, great. You know, he uses a girly word for looking, being at, sitting on the coffee table. In other words, that he was saying I was missing Eric Sloan's mind. I was making Eric Sloan's jokes at the final area, but I hadn't given Eric Sloan a mine. And so I think his mine is going to be 16 to 1. I don't think it's $17 a square inch. I think it's $16 a square inch is what he ends up paying uh, Eric, is I think the joke. Um, but we'll find that out. Um, so anyway, that's, I, I was missing, if you read the, that article and, and keep in mind that he's repeating things, um, but also specifically to what I, what I was missing, some of the harder ones, uh, the repetition, he's not saying, Barb, you missed it. Basically, the repetition is suggestive that I missed it. Um, so anyway, that I figured that one out. But the two others, we're going to get to the, move into the uh, Remembrance article now. And then we'll call it a day. Um, and we'll, and I, got, I still have to go back through the scrapbooks for these two people. But let me go to my community page. We're miss, I'm missing um, his friend. Um, George, 
from the University of Wyoming. And I'm missing, I think his name is Connolly, who was his partner on the, um, on the, uh, Dehore. I think he, I'm missing those two. Uh, he was the former governor. And why do I think that? Well, a couple of different reasons. In the Remembrance article, he makes a point. He calls, he, he really hits, he mentions Connolly again, but he also talks about the magic bullet. Okay, and I didn't know that story. I wasn't I wasn't around for the Kennedy assassination. But, but what they don't tell you, because the hints are in the aberrations, is um, it's, you had to kind of know things about different people to sort of figure out their answers and do a little research. So John Connolly was in the car as the governor from Texas with Kennedy and was sustained an injury. Um, I think it was through the shoulder he was shot. And the Remembrance article tells you about that. Well, that, that suggests, John Connolly, thank you. So they, and, and they called that the magic bullet because basically they were saying, I think it was maybe this shoulder, that the bullet went through and then hit Kennedy. And I think it hit him, that bullet might have hit him in the throat. And they were saying that um, that bullet was the magic bullet because it hit two people at once. And since then, people have said, oh, that doesn't make sense. You know, were there multiple shooters? Was that really the same bullet? But at the time, they were basically saying it was one bullet and they called it the magic bullet which is the same name as the car, right? He calls it the bullet because it was shot. So he's making subtle hints, I believe, to John Connolly. So I'm going to go back through the scrapbooks and look for him. I think potentially I might have erred in Donnie's mind. I have, then I have, to go back, I have to go back and look at Donnie again. And I have to go, because I thought his mind was Lucky Strike. You know there's a Lucky Strike mind because of the Annabelle Lee, Annabelle which is the Annabelle Lee Poe reference, again, another pattern. Um, you know Lucky Strike is one of the mines because there's a strike um, uh, lighter in that scrapbook. So I know Lucky Strike is for somebody, and, it's, and I thought it was for Donnie, but it could be actually for uh, Connolly. So I'm going to go back and look for that, and then I'm going to go look in the scrapbooks because that's where you'll see how his mine is hidden or his how he, in the poem, <clears throat> they don't say John Connolly in the poem. They'll, they'll use a word in the scrapbook in his discussion about John Connolly that will give you the word his word in the poem. Just like Pony Alt was, you know, Halt. Uh, just like Old the Zoe. Just like um, uh, uh, who's an easy one? New is for Cody. Um, Blaze, I think, is for the grandkids. That's the, he ties them with the horse blaze, you know, the, uh, um, the horse scene. So anyway, I'm going to find Connolly in the poem, or try to. Um, so I'm going to go back to Connolly and Donnie. Connolly was severely wounded in the chest, ribs, and arms. His condition was serious, but not yeah. And then he went, in, but not critical. And then he went on to other things. But really, I think the remembrance article was Doug telling you and me that that was his critical story about being in the car with the magic bullet, because again, the bullet reference. And so I have to go back and look and find, is he Lucky Strike Mine or is he somebody else? So anyway, I have to go back and do that. So I'm gonna do that next. And then the other person in there is his friend from, uh, what is it? I don't know how to say it, is it Frizan? Frizan? George? George? Um, I'm doing it off the top of my head, but it's his friend who was the archaeologist at University of Wyoming. There's a very nice YouTube video about him. And that, I think he's there as well because um, <clears throat> um, we know he was very tied to him. We know that he was a donor in Cody, the city Cody this time. Um, we know that they did things together in terms of their interest in archaeology. And um, I think that explains then why you have that odd story, which I haven't, I never associated yet with anybody. You know, there's, you know, you, you're supposed to say, huh? When you hear these stories, you're supposed to say, if you say, huh, that doesn't, that's weird or that doesn't make sense. That means it's a hint, right? So in that story, I think I suspect that he is in the poem because of that weird story about he goes to this, um, ranch and runs into these people who are like Native American and don't hardly have any clothes on and don't speak any English. So you think, you say to yourself, what the hell is that, you know? So anyway, it turns out that uh, that 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 uh, George wrote uh, about uh, hunting of the buffalo. You've got buffalo references. 
You've got uh, the statue, the Buffalo statue. You've got Cody the Buffalo in the book. Uh, that I, and then if you look um, at his like web page or something, there uh, there's a buffalo, and he was he was talking about buffalo traps. He also talked about the mammoth, which is interesting. Doug is writing his new book. It's about a mammoth. Um, I think Doug, I think I read just recently when I was reading about him, I think Doug actually wrote maybe like this prehistoric book with, um, he was involved. I, I just read it. I'll, I'll say it again when I read it, reread it, but Doug knows a lot about him too. So I think, so I think that he's going to be there. Um, I just have to figure out his mind and I have to figure out where the poem he is. And that I have to do by going back to the scrapbooks. So um, the other thing, if you look at my community page, you'll see that he's teasing that overt again is not true. Jack is not true. But there are hints to the solver, to call, number one, to calm down the solver, but also telling the solver under the opposite game that there's no Hollywood end for Jack. Well, under the opposite game, that means there's a Hollywood end to come. So that's that's how you do it. If you sort of are the Mad Hatter, which is this hat, by the way. I did a Mad Hatter joke with him when he wore that top hat. It's the opposite game. It's the Alice in Wonderland upside down game, the opposite. So if there's no Hollywood end for Jack, that means there's a Hollywood end yet to come. Uh, with, you know, the truth is in the lies thing. Um, but anyway, there's various jokes in there. One of the jokes uh, that I had made that I could recognize was the whole, uh, first of all, the scissors are in the chest for in the umbilical, umbilically connected is for the lost child. The sack around the dragon is again, the same concept, like umbilical. Um, so again, that's another, the dragon is the same thing as the crocodile, except the insincere versus the sincere, right? You've got Doug with the Pablo the dragon train and you've got prankster crocodile. So it's one and the same, you've got the, the Ouroboros, I think is how we pronounced it, bracelet, which is death to rebirth. So that's the symbol. So this is a lucky heaven on earth. You can't, you can't um, harm it. Leave everything alone. Don't take the log. Don't take any rocks. You know, if you want a little pebble for yourself somewhere else, you know, I suppose no one will be watching, but, but leave that area alone. I was very careful about touching stuff and I'm going to have to have somebody help me move a few, two things back, but I was very careful when I searched because I knew I didn't want to, you know, I knew it was supposed to be in honor of the friends and family. So I was very careful until the very end, moving something where, where I finally moved a rock um, because <coughs> I thought it was under um, the French grave marker. And um, because, you know, he ended it. So I thought I finally hit bingo. So I moved it at that time. So no, it turned out it was under the log, but I didn't know that at the time. So anyway, um, you know, don't no, don't move anything. Leave it alone. You're gonna get the real sacred treasure to come. You're gonna get the real sacred spot, the funny spot, and you can then help your kids or grandkids riddle solve through your own analysis along with mine, uh, and and have some fun. So I guess that's it. Let me see if there's anything else. Oh, and then he makes the reasonable, he makes the beyond a reasonable doubt that again was the continuation of the orange jumpsuit, the arrest joke. And I'll, I know there's a couple of pictures of me making the false arrest joke. I, I, one's already on the community, my community page. Um, let me go into my uh, communities page real fast. I have a, I have really nothing on the calendar. I have something at the end of the month. So I probably could come back live in a couple of days and do the, uh, this, the, the book discussion on Connolly and uh, George. Uh, okay, here, let me see what I missed. I give you notes on the remembrance page. I give you the quotes about why the chest is still a valuable chest from Forrest, because that's Forrest chest, okay? That's your prankster, and it's gonna be more valuable with the movie yet to come. So you don't have to worry about fraud or anything anymore with the movie, you know, he's basically saying, calm down. Don't you like it just as much? And with the movie, with the prankster, it's all going to be very funny and silly. And so nobody needs to worry about, uh, you know, the value of your contents. It's going to be, you know, with a movie, you're going to be owning something that's going to go national. 
Um, the poem in the Remembrance article was part of the Bugs Bunny, the King's Bugs Bunny joke, where he's bonking a rise or going to beef over the head. He's making my bug, Bugs Bunny joke. I took this King Bugs Bunny, I think I showed it to you in the past, and I took this King book and I took it by, you know, in the final area, I took pictures of it with it, telling him he was a jokester. And so if you see that video, um, that's where that is. He says in this one, Whistling Pines proffer your wisdoms to sup. You're like, what's up, Doc? In your, and, and plus I made a, a check dinner. In your place, the mountains rumble on your name. <laughs> like, what a jackass. <laughs> and can I even try to shut them up? Okay, so anyway, that's that. Then I tell you, um, but I think this is Doug telling me uh, their, their view of, of how they treated me, but which is, but Forrest had a final wish for where he thought the treasure should end up. The first step for me would be to try to make that happen. I had always said that I didn't think, given it's a sacred treasure, it didn't make sense to me to find a treasure symbolic of the friends and family and then sell it or put it under my bed and sell it. Like, how does that make sense if it's a sacred treasure? And so I think what he's doing is he gave the souvenir chest to everybody to sell. Um, and, and then um, I think that his wish for me, which I'll have to verify at the end, is for me either to sell it to like a museum, keep it, or um, sell it and hold to someone who's a respectable collector, but not to do uh, a piecemeal auction sale. So anyway, I think I think that's what they're saying in that regard. Um, and we'll, we'll hear more later. Uh, okay. Uh, it's true I was laying down in the final area, taking laying down with a, a hat over my head. Uh, there's like with the Banco reference, and we'll come back to this again, the Banco uh, reference to his father. And I think he, they use it like, um, like the bunkhouse or something, uh, is a, there's a feature there that you can enjoy, uh, rest a bit and, and enjoy the sunshine in the final area. Um, he uses the word forest. He talks about, um... And, and he had teased me about that as well um, with the, uh, as discussed in one of the scrapbooks about like there was the Jennifer Juniper song reference, um, like sleeping on the hill type thing. Um, I don't know how they knew that, but I, I do think there's must've been like trail cameras there. Um, I don't know, we'll find out. Um, <laughs> Such as horses, us. Uh, yeah, okay, here I it. There's George. Uh, he, he says about using Jack, who's my substitute. He says, it points to the treasure that seemed after some effort by me to have been faked by a cruel fellow searcher. That's true. I thought it was like, what? Like when, when I first saw it, I was like, what the heck is this? And it was, and I used the reference um, Gene Gene, the dancing machine. Uh, where he's, where he's, he, he comes across a field of, he's, he's bombarded with crap. So I use that. Um, and apparently this, this, this tells me that it was there for a long time, that it was just missed. Um, I tell you about, okay, here's the relish thing, the relish that, the, 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 that we talked about in our book discussion about the relish, which I, again, I think is salt like mine. Uh, that's the song, uh, Hunter's, where do I say this? Uh, Subtle Slip Ups. He talks about dogged, dogged reporters. I think, again, that's going to be lucky dog, a lucky dog mine for the dogs. Um, uh, da, 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 da. he talks, uh, close he head. Yeah. Oh, he basically says that people were coming to him for private hints. And uh, which I think is referred to in um, one of the songs with hunters with cell phones. And he was given the hints the whole time in the scrapbooks by making jokes. People were just not paying attention to his jokes thinking he was being silly. Um, uh, the, and, I, and I think the no, the front porch light reference, I, I think Cardigan might be uh, connected. 
And uh, I never would go beyond the gate um, to the house. I would drop off stuff at the gate. I, I saw a picture of that, of, of me at the gate. Uh, I'll post, I'll, I'll go back and find that maybe tomorrow. Um, okay, so you got the beyond a reasonable doubt joke. Uh, Force received from his fans after death. For me, I found the treasure, which I think is Cody, the lost child, when he let me know completely unprompted that he thought I was a genius. So that was really hard to find. That was hard to figure out. Um, you got you to um, run over soda cans. You've got a can picture in the, in the, in the Rooster Cogburn scrapbook. That's, again, the trash in Carson. You've got the crane, which is a car, <coughs> excuse me, a car hit. Um, there's the Connolly, which we're going to come back to. Um, again, alluding to the fact that the first chest we saw so far is, is a duplicate, as well as the errors, not only the made in France, but the errors in some of the contents. Um, so that's going to be interesting to find out what exactly Forrest did. You've got the Eric Sloan. Oh, here he calls it. He, he says as if he were Jack, but of course it looks gorgeous on my coffee table. Of course, no guy is going to say that it looks gorgeous on my coffee table. The same thing with crying on a log. Of course, those are both feminine things. Drinking a wine, feminine, you know. So anyway, they're, they're, they're telling you what you knew, which was it can't be Jack. Uh, okay, so again, there's the picture of um, on my community page with the scissors. Again, it's a umbilical reference, the dragon versus crocodile. You've got the other umbilical picture. Oh, the, the SNL, uh, I teased him. He says um, th that Jack doesn't know what the scissors are. So that's not credible. If you know the solve, you're going to know what the symbolism is, right? So he said, which is the umbilical to the lost child. So uh, he says, um, drying off after a decade in the elements, the Ziploc bag were full of condensation, and these two items were together in one. Why did I put scissors in there? Forrest asked me when he saw them. I don't know. I didn't know, of course. Well, again, you should know, right? I figured, this is what he says, I figured they belonged to King Tut or something like that. That's because I teased Forrest with the SNL uh, King Tut skit that um, that the poem was for tourism. He was very proud of the fact that it drew in tourism for, for Santa Fe. Uh, it's through some of the scrapbooks, he tells you that. So that was something that he was very happy with. And that I teased him because I knew it was basically an obituary that... Uh, that he died for tourism, which is the, the, the joke in the SNL King Tut skit. So he's repeating it back to me that yes, it is a, it is a, it is a gag for tourism to thank Santa Fe uh, for his lifelong uh, success there in, in the area. So uh, what else did I put in there? I'm just about done. He does talk about um, uh, a couple things that are relate to me, that I survived something that was fortunate to come uh, out in the end. That was the false arrest thing. That was just horrible. I came and started searching and riddle solving, which I told Forrest um, was like my stress relief from all of that, uh, that I enjoyed. I, that I said, you know, hey, Forrest, I've been going through something, something really bad. And I just wanted to let you know I've been enjoying the poem to cheer me up. And, and then, um, and I said, I've been enjoying the etymology of words. And I think his response, this was very early on. I hadn't figured out anything yet. And he teased me back, like with something like, oh, good luck with that, which turns out I was exactly right. And, um, but anyway, that was like the beginning of, of our relationship. So he knew, he, I think he did some more digging to find out exactly what happened to me. Um, but uh, that was the constant joke with the, the reasonable doubt. And that's what brought me to uh, stress relief was to puzzle solve. Um, and I did meet, he talks about Jack talking to him in 2018 via phone. Uh, it was actually, I met Forrest and he, he did the poker face um, at Collective Works in 2018. I think it was August. And uh, yeah, he, he, he didn't indicate at all like anything about you know, he, he was totally, you know, very nonchalant, no, no hidden any, you know, hidden hints to me at that. So he played it very even. 
And that's why I said from that point forward, I'll never, I'll never meet with him again, except at Fenbury to give him a quick hug. And I never, I never would go to the house and ask to come over. So, um, Okay, um, I give you the article to remind you that he tells you, he alludes to the fact, aside from the necklace where he makes the mojo necklace and he's making things that he's, you know, and he's making the jars, he's making the necklaces, that the, the, that he, the ultimate thing he makes are at least some of the contents of the chest. We'll find out. Um, but he also alludes to the fact that this is a gag and, and he refers to that in the mysterious writing um, story about Ashton Kutcher, and he pretends he doesn't know who he is, and of course the hint in that is punk, the, the punk show that he was involved with. Um, so you've, we've all been punked, at least for now, until they resolve it. Uh, okay, I guess that's it. So I'll come back in a few days after I go through Connolly and George and um, tell you where I think they are. And so... In the interim, if you want to start thinking about what could be the possible mine, think like an e English major. Um, think about where you'll find. If you want to see the book contents, you can buy the book on Amazon. I'll put the link again below. Um, and where is the funny kingdom? And again, think like an English major, not a finance major. And think about what's the, what's the riddle. Okay. All right. Thanks everybody for your time. Uh, is there anything else? No, nothing else for today in the chat. Okay, thanks everybody, and we'll see you in a couple days. Bye.